Millennium Force is the original Giga Coaster at Cedar Point. Built by Intamin, this was the first full circuit coaster to break the 300 foot or 91 meter tall barrier. This iconic coaster has never placed lower than second on Amusement Today's Golden Ticket Awards for the best steel coaster. Yet this ride has become somewhat of a joke in the coaster industry. Some have deemed this coaster Millennium Forceless. Well, I'm here to say that Millennium Force has force, but more importantly, it's just one of the most fun coasters in the world. Find out why in this review. Cedar Point is a pension for record-breaking roller coasters, specifically in the height and speed departments. The park opened Gemini in 1978. This 125 foot or 38 meter tall aero hybrid coaster was marketed by the park as the tallest and fastest roller coaster in the world. While Busch Gardens Williamsburg's Loch Ness Monster was technically taller, and Six Flags St. Louis' Screaming Eagle was technically faster, it couldn't be argued that Gemini was a monstrous coaster for the time. In 1989, Cedar Point opened Magnum XL 200. This would be the first full circuit hyper coaster, or coaster to break the 200 foot or 61 meter tall barrier. This aero coaster would stand 205 feet or 62 meters tall, making it the world's tallest full circuit coaster. It would also be the undisputed world's fastest coaster, hitting speeds of 72 miles per hour or 116 kilometers per hour. These records were stolen by a few coasters over the next decade, and by 2000, the world's tallest coaster was Superman at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This shuttle coaster had a max height of 415 feet, or 127 meters, and reached speeds of 100 miles per hour, or 161 kilometers per hour. The tallest full circuit coaster is Fujiyama at Fuji Q Highland, standing 259 feet, or 79 meters tall. And the world's fastest full circuit coaster was Goliath, also at Six Flags Magic Mountain, reaching speeds of 85 miles per hour, or 137 kilometers per hour. Cedar Point aimed to break the latter two records. And at the turn of the millennium, there were signs. Cedar Point debuted Millennium Force to much fanfare in 2000. This would be the first full circuit giga coaster, or coaster to break the 300 foot or 91 meter tall barrier. Millennium Force would stand 310 feet or 94 meters tall and reach speeds of 93 miles per hour or 150 kilometers per hour. Steel Dragon 2000 at Nagashima Spyland would take both these records just two months after Millennium Force opened but Cedar Point was the first. Ever since Millennium Force opened, it has received widespread acclaim. Park guests regularly return to the station clapping, and the coaster has never placed lower than second in Amusement Today's Golden Ticket Awards, claiming the award for the world's best steel coaster a whopping 10 times. Now, there is a case that Millennium Force isn't even in the top two at its own park anymore, but the ride is still plenty popular. The ride routinely has 45 to 60 minute waits midday, and that's with it running three trains pretty regularly. I love how close the queue line gets to this coaster's finale. It really gets you excited. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. When you reach the station, you hear the ride's signature music playing in the background. It's simple, but it's one of my favorite coaster soundtracks. The operators also speak over the intercom non-stop to further hype guests. The energy in Millennium Force's station is incredible. And if you want the front, you may be in there for a while. This coaster has a very long queue line for the front, and quite frankly, I don't care how long it is. I'm always going to wait for the front. That is the de facto seat to experience this coaster. While the first drop is pretty incredible in the back, the sustained speed you experience up front is what makes this coaster special for me. I've tried the second row but it's just not the same. I'll wait the extra 15 to 20 minutes for the very front. The super low nose of the train allows the wind to pelt almost your entire body. Most people run to Steel Vengeance or Maverick in the morning, but I actually like going to Millennium Force first. If you head there for early entry, most seats are a complete walk-on, and more importantly, the front is regularly just a one to two train wait. Just keep your mouth shut because bugs are often out in the morning, and the best entrance to use this strategy is the marina entrance as long as it's in use. And in situations like this, the almighty magic gate may be open. 
Millennium Force has a separate load and unload platform. When the coaster is just a station weight, the operators will open a special gate in the unload platform that dumps you right back in the station. It will save you quite a few steps and more importantly time. Millennium Force has super long trains. Each train is comprised of 9 cars seating a total of 36 riders. Each car arranges riders in two rows of two. When you sit down, make sure to put on your seatbelt first, lap bar second. The operators will be sure to remind you countless times. You'll fall asleep reciting that line. The seatbelts on Millennium Force are shorter than most coasters, so be warned if you're on the larger side. You are then secured by a super minimalistic T-bar restraint. These restraints combine with the open trains to grant riders a shocking amount of freedom for a coaster of this scale. I absolutely love this ride's restraints. Millennium Force has a blue, red, and yellow train, and they really pop against the blue track. Millennium Force doesn't really have any theming, but it doesn't need it. The coaster is a nice looking entrance plaza, and the ride itself quite simply looks like a work of art. The massive lift hill has an aesthetically pleasing support structure, and it looks magical at night with all those multicolored lights illuminating it. Then the rest of the track is integrated beautifully into the park, as it soars over and around pathways. Once checked, a catch car grabs the train, and you're pulled up the cable lift at a decent clip. It was significantly faster than chain lifts at the time, but not nearly as fast as Intamin's newer cable lifts. And nowadays, I think B&M Gigas have faster lift hills. However, I'm fine with Millennium Force's lift not being over in a flash, because the views are astounding. You get a complete view of Cedar Point to your right, and more impressively, you can see for miles over Lake Erie and the peninsula to your left. It's one of the best views on any ride, and you feel every bit of Millennium Force's height. Once at the top, you are thrown over the 300 foot or 91 meter tall drop. And this is one of the best drops on any coaster. It is very steep, reaching a max angle of 80 degrees, and the drop seems to last an eternity. The back will get several seconds of beautiful and sustained floater airtime. This is the one element that is superior in the back. However, the drop is still incredible up front. I recommend leaning forwards and it feels like you're base jumping. Along with that amazing visual, you'll also feel some weak sustained airtime as well. It's just not as strong as the back car. This is followed by one of the most sustained grayouts on any coaster for me. I will routinely lose my vision through the first drop's pullout, all the way through the overbank and tunnel. It's not uncommon for a pullout, inversion, or helix to momentarily have me lose some of my vision. But it's exceedingly rare what Millennium Force does. I lose most of my field of view for a good 10 to 12 seconds. Everything starts to go fuzzy from the sustained positive Gs. And that's not a ride that should be called forceless, don't you think? Millennium Force pulls 4.5 Gs. That's pretty high. And the positive Gs are sustained on the drops pullout all the way through the overbank that follows. That overbank is just 169 feet or 52 meters tall, so you absolutely haul through it. The low 90 degree turn that follows does not feel as forceful as the prior two elements, but is strong enough to maintain the gray out. Along with those positives, you also feel this coaster's speed. Millennium Force never slows down. You then blast through a tunnel and glide over a gigantic 182 foot or 55 meter tall camelback. This hill delivers floater airtime that's weak in power but sustained for several seconds. One of the biggest criticisms with Millennium Force is its airtime strength or lack of it. While the coaster doesn't offer the ejector airtime Intamin is known for in most of their mega coasters, the four airtime moments this coaster does have are super sustained which more than compensates in my book. Millennium Force then rips through Millennium Island and you navigate back to back overbanks. These overbanks just don't do it for me in most seats. They're fast, but they don't have much force to them. I do really enjoy the transitions into and out of the second overbank though. The change in track banking is decently snappy and it pulls some solid positive G's. However, this section is a pure joy up front. The speed is incredible. Trees whiz past you in the blink of an eye, 
and the wind is a constant reminder of how fast you're going. Millennium Force then travels over another parabolic camelback that runs alongside the prior one. This one is quite a bit smaller, but the airtime is just as sustained. And the airtime is actually stronger this time too. It's decent floater this time in terms of power. The coaster then charges through a tunnel with a 90 degree turn. This narrow tunnel further accentuates the coaster's crazy speed, and the way you bank sideways going that fast in such an open vehicle always feels special. When you blast into the daylight, you zoom over a speed hill adjacent to the queue line. This is the strongest airtime moment on the ride, as it delivers very strong floater airtime while you're simultaneously still experiencing this coaster's blistering speed. You then zoom around a corner, hit a brief section of straight track, and then zip around a whippy final overbank. You then hit the brake run still traveling roughly over 60 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour and the magnetic brakes smoothly bring you to a stop. As awesome as Millennium Force is by day, it's extra special at night. There's very little light along the course, so the coaster feels even faster, if that's even possible. Just know there are hundreds of bugs waiting to sacrifice themselves, and whoever's riding up front will serve as a human shield for the rest of the train. But it's all part of the experience. Most coasters are a sum of their individual elements, Millennium Force transcends that if you ride it up front. The entire coaster feels like one seamless motion since it holds its speed so well. The pacing on this coaster is spectacular up front. The great elements combined with all that speed are everything I could want. The middle section does lose something in other rows, but the start and finish to Millennium Force is still strong in every seat. I also love how Intamin designed this coaster without a mid-course brake run or trim brakes so there's no stoppage or pause in the action. You just have over one minute of beautiful and sustained speed. So what would I rate Millennium Force? I would give this coaster a 9.5 out of 10. Up front, Millennium Force is a perfect ride. This is one of the best coasters in the world for speed. It's just pure fun. This Intamin Giga Coaster takes you on an incredible joy ride. In any other seat, Millennium Force is probably an 8.5 or a 9. This coaster is one of the world's best drops, one of the best sequences of sustained positive Gs, and a few other hills with sustained airtime. Those elements can be enjoyed in any row. And while the speed is palpable throughout the train, it's just off the charts up front. I don't care how much longer you need to wait, it is worth it for a front row ride on Millennium Force to feel this ride's full power. Steel Vengeance is my favorite coaster at Cedar Point, but Millennium Force is my second favorite, and it has a firm spot in my top 25 steel coaster list. I always come off this coaster with a big smile on my face. I think Fury 325 is the world's best giga coaster now, but Millennium Force comfortably holds the second spot, even after all these years. So those are my thoughts on Millennium Force, the original giga coaster at Cedar Point. What are your thoughts on this iconic coaster? Do you think it's worthy of the name Millennium Force? Or do you think it's Millennium Forceless? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.